hum. Anybody else hear the hum? A little bit. Huh. Well, hopefully we're going to get rid of that hum. We received our new audio equipment today, so we'll see if we get next week we can uh, get rid of the hum and make it all better. Well, good evening. Welcome. Oh, I don't have the floodlights on. I left them off on purpose. It's dark up here now. Um, thanks for joining us this evening. It is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. Tonight we begin our theme season, Places of the Passion. Tonight's place is the city of Jerusalem. Um, let's see, where did my announcements go? Um, nothing really, other than we will be having service live every Wednesday night throughout Lent. We'll also be streaming live, which we are now, so if you can't make it here, watch us there. And uh, then we'll also be all doing uh, Sunday services. And then starting tomorrow for Lent, we're going to be reading the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, we start with Matthew chapter 1. Uh, Matthew is 28 chapters, and there's 31 days of Lent that aren't a Wednesday or a Sunday. So I'm going to squeeze a couple other chapters in from another gospel uh, as we get closer to Easter. But that'll be our daily readings uh, for that. So please join me for that as well. Um, prayer list this evening, Penny Larson, Colton Ledeen, Dave Pearson, Brett Everman, Linda Koppelman, Marion, and Walt Schutte. Um, and that's what I have. Anybody else have anything or anybody? Okay. I'm going to let you sit for the moment as we begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us ever walk with Jesus. See the depths of his love. To behold the gift of his forgiveness. To gaze upon the heights of his grace. To marvel at the magnitude of his mercy. We walk with Jesus to the city of Jerusalem. Because Passover is coming. And the Son of Man will be crucified. Faithful Lord with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. We begin now with our opening hymn number 685, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. Let us ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure. Through a world that would deceive us And to sin our spirits lure Onward in his footsteps treading Pilgrims hear our home above Full of faith and hope and love let us to the Father's bidding, faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. Let us ever live with Jesus. He has risen from the dead that to life we may awaken Jesus you are now our head we are your own living members where you live there we shall be in your presence constantly living there with you forever faithful Lord with me abide life eternal grant to me boy I missed 
the verse a little bit there. Hope I didn't overpower you with the wrong line. Please rise. Magnificent and merciful Father, because I walk into dark and dangerous places, hear me as I confess my sins. My feet take me to places of compromise and sinful ambition. My heart lingers in places of lust and lies. My words take me to places of anger, rage, and hatred. My ears delight in going to places of gossip, deceit, and ridicule. My mind takes me to places of selfishness and pride. My eyes lead me to places of envy and greed. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We now take a moment for silent reflection on the fact that, through, that though our sin is great, Christ's love is greater. Friends, hear the good news. Jesus walked to places of rejection, suffering, torment, and death for you. Jesus was determined to go to Gethsemane, Gabbatha, and Golgotha for you. That's why Jesus forgives you completely and loves you eternally. Faithful Lord, with me abide, I shall follow where you guide. You may be seated. And we're going to continue with the imposition of the ashes. And what I'd like to do is we'll start in the middle and we'll kind of alternate pews. So what, you guys will come up first and then go back. And then when they're up, you guys, and then we'll just go back and forth. And then when they're done, then we'll start over here. Okay? But first I'm going to do Doug. So come on up, Doug. i got to put my mask on. From dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. Just, yeah, just take over. Yeah, that should be. That should be plenty. All right. From dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. From dust you were formed. To dust you shall return. From dust you were formed. To dust you shall return. From dust you were formed. To dust you shall return. From dust you were formed. To dust you shall return. From dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. From dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. From dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. Dust you shall return. From dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. From dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. What do you do mean, by the way? From dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. From dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. From dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. Okay. 
What? You're not appearing in the camera at all. Why? I don't know. The dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. Where was it or something? From dust you were formed, to dust you shall return. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you created us in your holy image. But through our continuous sin, we have been poor reflections of you. Strengthen us throughout this season to put away sin and selfish ambition so that we may journey toward the cross and empty tomb with all humility and patience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Excuse me. I have to take a break here. Apparently there's a technical issue in the back. <laughs> Hang on. All right. Oh, let me sit here. Let me out. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Okay. They're hearing it, though, right? I'm guessing. So. Let's see. Okay, there, yeah. So here, let's... Uh, Well, if all of those out there, we have a problem with the camera. Nobody can see me out online. You guys are privileged here in church, but we're going to see if we can fix that. Yeah, we didn't get the new camera yet. That's the problem. It must have heard we were getting a new camera. So now it's being... Okay. <clears throat> no, it's... Oh, yeah. It's showing up there. Yep. Okay. I don't know why it's not showing up. Okay. Thank you, Fran. <laughs> well, let me know if you can see me when I go out here now. Oh, oh they can see me. <laughs> we continue now with our Old Testament reading for this evening. Thank you for your patience. Our reading comes from Exodus chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of all months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's house, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the house in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night roasted on the fire. Then unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted. Its head with its legs and its inner parts. 
and you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And in all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Paul writes, your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for our gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. When Jesus had finished all these things, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our next hymn, number 637, Draw Near and Take the Body of the Lord. Draw near and take the body of the Lord and drink the holy blood for you outpour. Offered was he for greatest and for least himself the victim and himself the priest. He who his saints in this world rules and shields and who all believers life eternal yields with heavenly bread he makes the hungry whole gives living waters to the thirsting soul come forward then with faithful heart sincere and take the pledges of salvation here O Lord our hearts with grateful thanks and as in this feast of love you bless us now. Oh, can you still see me? Did I go away again? Oh. It must have been when you changed screens, huh? Well, I just, the top one, I turned the camera off and then back on again. Try that. You got to wait a second and then push it again and see if that helps. Oh, 
Well, I'm going to keep going. The folks out there can pretend it's radio. <laughs> I don't want to take too long. Did it come back? Nope. The other thing you can do is go into that thing and delete the video, and then that's the other thing I did, is click on the video capture device, delete it, and then put it back. We'll try that. While they're working on that, grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, his Son, our Savior. Amen. All right, anybody out here ever been to Oklahoma? I was once. Whew. Flat. Not a lot in Oklahoma. I hope nobody from Oklahoma out there is taking any offense to this, but I'll take Wisconsin. One of the things Oklahoma does have, though, that we have, but not to the degree that they do, is unpredictable weather, particularly in the spring of the year. They get a pattern. Warm, tropical air blows up out of the Gulf. Cool, dry air comes down from the central plains. And then out of the west, warm, dry air. And the three air masses come together. And when they meet, they produce a predictable pattern. And what would that be? Wicked weather. Anybody ever watch Twister? Wicked weather. Call 911, take cover, find your cellar, get out of the way. Anybody out here ever lived through a tornado, been in a tornado? No? Yes? Okay. Yeah. I actually had the experience, too, in my lifetime. Don't care to do it. One I watched from a distance, one went right over our head. It was rather exciting. One thing I would say, though, with some certainty, is that all of us, at one time or another, in our lives, have lived through a storm. You know how it is. This, the, the sky grows dark. It gets cloudy. The wind begins to howl. When I used to live in Minneapolis, the sirens would go off. We had the tornado sirens where they'd tell you to head for the basement. Then you know how it is. The rain starts coming down in buckets. The power lines shake and quiver. Sometimes the power goes out. You'll hear the emergency vehicles running up and down the street. We know when that happens that we're in a bad place. And sometimes it can be a very bad place. Well, today, Lent begins with Ash Wednesday. And with it, we begin a sermon series called Places of the Passion. And throughout this Lenten season, we're going to be using the Gospel of Matthew. That's partly why I decided to read all of Matthew in between. And we will walk with Jesus to places like the Upper Room, the Garden of Gethsemane, Pilate's Judgment Hall, the, the Hill of Golgotha all these different places of the passion. Today, we are walking with Jesus to the city of Jerusalem. Our scripture reading began today. It says, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to the disciples. Now, I don't know if you realize it or not, but Matthew records five teaching blocks in his gospel. Most people feel that it's patterned after the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament. Five times in his gospel, Matthew writes, when Jesus had finished all these things. He did it in Matthew 7, Matthew 11, Matthew 13, Matthew 19, and then again today for the fifth time in Matthew 26, verse 1. It's the final time that Matthew writes when Jesus had finished all these sayings. So what's the point? Well, the point of today's statement is that Matthew is finishing his gospel. He's wrapping things up. All things are coming to an end. And it will end with a massive storm. The sky is growing dark and cloudy. The wind is beginning to howl, and soon the rain will be coming down in holy buckets. How so? Jesus said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up 
to be crucified. This will be Jesus' last Passover in Jerusalem. He's about to be crucified, dead, and buried. Jesus is stuck in a bad place, a very bad place, and the storm is ready to hit. Now, I think we all know what it feels like to be stuck in a vulnerable, exposed place when a storm hits. And have you ever been out on the lake when a storm hits? Pretty vulnerable and exposed, right? All right. How many of you are raising or have raised teenagers? Pretty vulnerable and exposed place, right? Or if you are a teenager out there watching, you ever been cut from the team? Have you ever lost the love of your life? Are finances tight? What about your health? Is old age getting the best of you? Has a doctor used that C word? with you. Any of you remember? I think a bunch of you will remember. There used to be a soap opera out there called The Secret Storm. Remember that? Yeah. Well, I think it's fair to say that a secret storm is the worst kind of storm. Why? Because we feel so all alone. It's a secret storm because we're so ashamed and so embarrassed and so afraid that we don't tell a soul. Most of life's storms come and go. But there's another kind of storm that comes, but it never goes. It hammers and hounds. It brings with it hell and high water, thunder roars, lightning, zigzags across the sky. What am I talking about? The storm of sin. Sin comes and it never goes. What does sin look like? Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. Because they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among them. Joseph Caiaphas is the high priest. I don't know if you knew it or not, but Joseph held the office from 18 to 36 AD. 18 years he was the high priest. If you know anything about Jewish law, you know there's something wrong there because the high priest was only supposed to be in place for a year. But Caiaphas was there far longer than anyone. And why? because of his skill and political shrewdness. Caiaphas knew that a public arrest of Jesus would be very risky. There would most certainly be an uproar among the people because they believed that Jesus was a mighty prophet. Caiaphas couldn't have Jesus killed during the Passover feast. (coughs) Excuse me. But he couldn't wait until after the Passover because then what would happen? Well, Jesus would probably leave Jerusalem and go back to Galilee and he'd escape yet again. Because this wasn't the first time they plotted against Jesus. So why, you might ask, are the chief priest and the elders plotting to kill Jesus? The amateur is simple. Because they were losing their place. They had the most important places, the most important place in the synagogue and in the market. They wore long tassels. They gave a tenth of their possessions. They fasted twice a week. They prayed long prayers and they could take their esteemed place in the community and they could thank God that they were not in the place of other people, tax collectors and sinners and the like. The chief priests and the elders had a place of power and a place of respect until Jesus came. 
Jesus' ministry attracted crowds. His words touched hearts. His hands opened eyes. His presence brought about a life that was full of grace and truth. And then what happened? Well, the chief priests and the elders began to lose their place. That's why they gathered to plot and prepare for Christ's death. So do you see what sin is? Sin is holding on to my place. Sin is not allowing Christ into my place. And sin is making sure others stay in their place. We're not that much different than the chief priests and the elders. Eventually, sin brings with it tornadic winds and life-threatening lightning, and it can destroy everything. So what is Christ's response to our sin? Does he condemn us? Does he lock us up and throw away the key? Do you remember what Jesus says in Matthew 26, 2? We just read it. He said, you know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. That's what Jesus does. He walks to a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. And at Golgotha, Jesus walks into the storm. In 2 Corinthians 5.19, Paul writes, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. What does that look like? Jesus willingly places himself in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the tornado of all tornadoes. Listen, can you hear him? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Today, you will be with me in paradise. I thirst. Are you stuck in a bad place? Jesus was stuck in a bad place. Are you hurting? Jesus hurt. Are you bleeding? Jesus bled. Do you feel like you're gasping for air? Jesus gasped for air. Are you crying? Jesus cried. Is your heart breaking? Jesus' heart was absolutely broken. What does it all mean? What it means is very important to each and every one of us. What it means is that you and I, we are not alone in the storm. We are never alone in the storm. To the Father, haunted by his angry outbursts, Jesus speaks. To the husband and wife who barely talk to each other, Jesus speaks. To all of us exposed to constant storm of sin, Jesus speaks. Listen, can you hear him? Do you know what he says? I love you. So what should we do when we're stuck in a bad place? When we're in a massive, life-threatening, category five kind of storm? when it looks as though everything is going to be wiped off the map, should we panic? Pout? Pretend? Should we freak out? Have our 19th nervous breakdown? 
do something we'll regret for the rest of our life? No, no, and no. God knows how to get his people safely through the storm. Isn't that the message of Passover? God doing whatever it takes to get Israel safely through their unpredictable, ferocious, and hellish storm called Egypt. There was the Pharaoh with his whips and bricks and bag of tricks. There was the Red Sea, which looked like a dead end. And there were the horses and the chariots. And what happened? The Israelites walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. God knows, absolutely knows, how to get his people safely through the storm. Isn't that the message of Jesus' Passover meal as well? With his true body and blood, Jesus takes us, you and I, he takes us from that stormy place to another place, a place of peace in his presence, a place to lay our burdens down, a place to receive forgiveness and be made new. Jesus has reserved our place, a place at his table just for you. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I got to look here. Okay. Well, let's see. I changed up the order here. I'm going to do this, even though we're not getting to this part yet, because this is where it says the offering should be, and during the offering is when we usually prepare this. But usually on a regular service, we do the offering after the prayers. So just forgive me for a moment while I make this stuff disappear. And uh, then we'll do the prayers. And I'm going to let you sit while we do the prayers. Let us pray. Onward in Christ's footsteps treading, pilgrims here are home above, full of faith and hope and love. Let us do the Father's bidding, and so we pray, Jesus, you will finally deliver us from every storm, so we lift our prayers and raise our petitions to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Deliver us from pride and arrogance, lest we fail to acknowledge our sins and confess them. Lord, hear our prayer. Deliver the world from the enemies of peace and from injustice, and give us good and faithful leaders to protect the unborn and promote virtue. Lord, hear our prayer. Deliver the erring from their darkness, the doubting from their uncertainty, and the wandering from their ways, and return them to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Deliver us from the terror of death and the grave. Lord, hear our prayer. Deliver us from selfish desire, from the tyranny of things, and from wasteful use of the resources you have entrusted to our care. Lord, hear our prayer. Deliver us from ingratitude for all your mercies and restore our hearts and hope. Lord, hear our Jesus, deliver us and bring us to the table of your body and blood. Jesus, let me be faithful be. Life grant to me. Amen. All right. Now I'm going to have you rise as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is surely good, right, and fitting that we should give you the thanks and praise you are due, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For you have kept your promise once given to Adam and sent forth your Son, born of Mary, to offer you his perfect obedience and clothe us with his righteousness that we may be declared your holy people and be granted salvation through his perfect merit and abundant mercy. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you. And we're not saying. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. Gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given up for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, give us <laughs> come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. All right, have a seat. I'm changing things up just a hair. We have the um, pre-distribution hymn. We're going to all sing. We're going to move that up. We're going to all sing that together. And then after that, then I'm going to do the benediction, and then we'll have communion. So just sit back, relax, and join with me as we sing hymn number 424, O Christ, You Walked the Road. Walk the road our wandering feet must go. You faced with us temptation, power, and fought our ancient foe. No bread of earth alone can fill our hungering hearts. Lord, help us seek your loving word, the food your grace imparts. No blinding sign we ask, no wonder from above. Lord, help us place our trust alone in your unswerving love. When lures of easy gain with promise brightly shine, Lord, help us seek your kingdom first, our will with yours align. O Christ, you walk the road, our wandering feet must go.
Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for you. Welcome to the Lord's table.